Okay, so that's the uh, potentially water-containing asteroids. How about a metal one? How much metal is there going to be in one of those? Well, this could be quite interesting because when we look at an M-type asteroid, most of it is iron. So 80, 90% of it is going to be iron. Now, how do we know that? I mean, one way we could do it is by looking at the chunks of that that have landed on Earth and That's measuring right. what they're made out of. The other way is you can just assume that um, you look at what elements everything was started out with, what, which ones would sink to the middle, and then blow the, be blown apart and try and work it out from first principles that way. But probably we're, we're getting this mostly by looking at lumps of rock that land on Earth and measuring sp reflection spectra of there and saying, oh, that looks the same as our thing in space, therefore it must be made of the same sort of stuff. That's right. So when we, when we see these estimates, it isn't 8.5%. The fact that they put 0.06% is oddly too specific for really what we're trying to do. It's, it's almost all iron. There's less nickel, but more than everything else. And there's a bunch of other stuff. And we have detected signatures of platinum group elements, as we'll talk about in a second, or cobalt. So we have seen those reflected off the surface, but we don't really know how much in their ratios. And as you said, a lot of this is drawn on what we know from these asteroids or meteorites that have landed and some first principles of physics. And this is probably the more or less the same composition as the core of the Earth or Venus or Mars or anything else like that. These are, the, I think they call them siderophile elements, yeah. the ones that tend to sink in this early molten phase. So this always poses our first trick. How do you develop a mission where you actually don't know the exact quantities, right? If you really want gold, well, you still don't actually know if there's enough gold to make it worth your while or some. So we really have to figure out how much there could be even on the, the small scale. Now, you know, when we look at the silicates, the, these are the boring ones, they have lots of good, useful things but not really the useful things for us. What we really want is this stuff. So let's go back to Themis. Now, this is the one that we know of ice. It doesn't have metal, but we'll take it as an example asteroid. Yeah, but let's just assume we have a 200 kilometer size metal yeah. one like uh, Psyche. Psyche, yep, so. So similar idea, similar mass. Now, 90% or so is gonna be iron. Now, if we take 90% of this huge number, we get almost 10,000 trillion tons worth of iron. That, is a lot. And we're assuming it's uniform all the way through, but at this point we don't know. 8% nickel, that gives us still 800 trillion tons. I mean, 0.05% gold and platinum is still giving us 50 trillion tons of it. You know, even when we say it's maybe small, there's just a lot. When you talk about a chunk of metal that weighs a small fraction of the moon, you get a lot. I guess the question then is, is this actually a lot compared to what we have on Earth? Yeah, I mean, we're into a meaningless big number syndrome yeah. here. There's, yeah, this is very, very big. But how much is there on Earth that's ever been mined? Can we compare it to that? So this is those numbers we just calculated from a, a large asteroid like Themis. And this is how much we do globally. So this is how much of these elements is mined globally. And then just in Australia is here. So in iron, we're actually already mining 2 billion tons of iron a year. So you get it more from it, but this is also per year, yes. right? So we're talking about if we could scoop this all at once and deposit into our bank account, we would get more, but presumably we'd be slower. So we're talking two billion, so it's still, that means it's 500 years yeah. to get one trillion, as he got 9,000 trillion, so. Yes. It's still a lot more. Yes. But then we actually start getting to the, the rare ones where these numbers quite become quite large. We only mine about 100,000 tons worth of nickel, and we're talking about 880 trillion tons. Eight, we're literally talking about tens of thousands of years worth of mining. It, pretty much, we have mined a f small fraction to date of what this one thing could have. Yes, and for gold and platinum, I mean, platinum is <laughs> 161 tons as opposed to 55 trillion. I mean. Like, I mean, I mean we, we literally are talking about numbers that are just not even comparable, and this is actually what the focus is. If we find these really rich ones that have lots of metals, we quite are talking about numbers that just blow out of the water what we have on Earth. Yeah, this is one asteroid the size of Psyche, 200 kilometers across. Yeah. Now, of course, there are many more asteroids out there, even a smaller one, one that's even like one kilometer or something like that, it's, it's going to be you. You're still talking about just trillions of tons, not thousands of trillions of tons, right? Yes. So, you know, even if that slips into a billion, it's still a lot more than the 160 
we're doing. So we're really starting to talk about numbers that are, uh, well, astronomical in some ways. And this is what gets people's eyes lighting up with dollar signs. Exactly, because people think, ooh, lots of worth here. All right. Hydrogen, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen. There's a lot of it, but we actually don't care about that. That's the rubbish now. What can we focus on? Iron, cobalt, nickel. We can use some, you know, we use it for industry. And a lot of this use is how do we turn this into being used in space? So that's one of the first principles of all this material. Instead of it bringing up to make or build new space stations or build things on Mars, we just go to our friendly neighborhood asteroid. So, I mean, in principle, you could say, let's solve the world's supply problem by taking this off the asteroid and lowering it down to the Earth's surface. But quite apart from the difficulties of lowering millions of tons of iron down to the Earth's surface without dropping on people and killing them, the highest value place for the stuff is space. Yes. Because whenever iron costs on the Earth's surface, a kilogram of iron in space is going to cost a lot more because you've had to launch it. Yes. And if it's already in space, that's when you have a huge cost benefit. So the cost benefit of taking this iron down to Earth to do something maybe marginal, but if you're trying to build something in space, this is definitely the cheapest way to do it. Exactly, and then that means you can do more and all those goals. So it becomes quite an interesting argument that the volumes we're talking about do start to outrun the probably initial cost of doing this. If we, if we could do it on Mars, we could probably do it on an asteroid, right? But there are some other subtleties. One of the problems that we have that is often assumed is people say, hey, we got platinum. But what we actually detect is platinum group elements. And that is rhodium, platinum, and palladium, and iridium, all very useful things in their own right, actually pretty much look the same in spectra from the infrared. It's like when we talked about uh, water on the moon, hydroxyls. Is it just one H and an O? Is it a H and three O's? Is it an H and two H's and an O? We don't really have a great difference when some of these things are very similar to what they look like. But odds are they're in the same sort of ratio as they are in metal That's meteorites right. that land on Earth. So we can measure those things. And it's not going to be that different. There's no particular chemical reason why something should have disappeared from an asteroid as opposed to something else. Exactly. So you, you, you want to check. You, you want to take check. a sample That's up right. just to make sure before you spend a trillion dollars mining it. <laughs> So you know, and, and that, it's, it's highly probable that you're in the same exactly. sort of ratios we see on Earth, and in the, particularly in the rocky me in, um, metal meteorites that land on Earth. That's right. So, which after all have come from an asteroid like this. Exactly. So you know, that's our best argument here. Is even though yes, we're a little bit limited in what we do, we do have these samples here on Earth, and even if the numbers are slightly different, you're not going to go all in to go. I'm just going to go mine nickel. You're, no one's going to set up shop just to go mine nickel on an asteroid. If you're doing it, you're going to take everything and distribute it accordingly. So now we have a few asteroids, at least, that have pretty much my retirement in it. So let's- Pretty much the world's retirement. The, the world's retirement. So let's actually see how much money is involved in this. 